I swear this never happens. Hello everyone and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Massy and dang it, it happened again. No sooner do I release a video that I believe to be fairly comprehensive, then do I come across an item that would have been absolutely perfect to feature in said video. So the soda siphon that I featured in my recent video on that subject was incomplete and non-functional, missing as it was its CO2 cartridge and holder. However, the other day I'm in a flea market and what do I stumble across but a complete and fully functional soda siphon which not only has its cartridge holder but also a full cartridge with an intact seal. So I knew immediately that I had to buy this and make a follow-up video. So this particular model was manufactured by American Cut Crystal of New York City sometime in the 1960s and is very similar to the Sparklets Model D that we looked at in the previous video, differing in only the style of mesh covering the model, the styling of the headpiece, and the fact that the dip tube is made out of plastic rather than glass. So it still has the baffle feature at the end to stop dry ice from shooting out the bottom and hitting the glass where it might actually damage it. And of course, we have our cartridge holder at the top, as well as the cartridge, which is what's known as a type C cartridge. So there were three different sizes of cartridges developed in the early days of cartridge siphons. The very small type A developed in 1896, the slightly larger type B, and finally the 8 gram type C, which remains the standard to this day. So how you would use this is you would unscrew the headpiece and fill the bottle up to the red line with water, screw the headpiece back on, place your cartridge in the holder, and then thread it onto this boss until the hollow needle pierces the seal on the cartridge and releases the carbon dioxide into the bottle. You're then ready to dispense some seltzer. Now, this cartridge doesn't seem to have very much pressure. Indeed, the water is barely carbonated at all, but I will chalk this up to the cartridge being very old and having lost a little bit of its pressure over the previous 60 years. Now, some of you asked in the comments of the previous video whether the cartridge needs to be in place the entire time you are using the siphon. And the answer is no. There's actually a one-way valve in here so that once the cartridge is screwed into place and has discharged its CO2 into the bottle, you can remove the holder. The CO2 isn't going to leak back out. And so there you have it, a fully functioning soda siphon. Now, I do want to take this opportunity to cover a couple of points that I missed in my previous video. First of all, the other styles of siphons that didn't have an external cartridge could only be recharged at the manufacturer or other similar organizations. And indeed, a lot of companies ran a service, very much like a milk delivery service, where you could leave out your empty siphons and somebody would come along and swap them out for one that was recharged. Also, in the 1850s, there was an early type of self-charging siphon known as a gazogène, not to be confused with the wood gas generators used to run vehicles during the World Wars. And this consisted of a soda siphon with two compartments, a lower one for the water to be carbonated, and an upper one that would have contained a mixture of tartaric acid powder, this was a byproduct of the wine industry, and sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, along with a little bit of water. And these reacted to produce carbon dioxide, which was transferred to the lower compartment, and then the resulting carbonated water was conveyed by a dip tube to a nozzle to be dispensed. And as some of you also pointed out in the comments of the previous video, such a device features in several of the Sherlock Holmes stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, being a fixture of the decor of 221 Baker Street. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time in another video where we'll look at yet more fascinating devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Nessier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.